What's up guys, Van Zeeben here, and we are back with episode 16.7 of Javi 2D Game Engine Development. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a move packet to send some move data to the actual server. Um, I know it's been a while, and forgive me for that, I just needed uh, to get a new mic and some other things. So, uh, Also, if you notice that my typing's a little off today, or my mouse, because I have a new keyboard and mouse, and they're a little strange and I'm still getting used to them, but that's that. Um, so what we're going to do today is we need to send some more data to this game server, and you'll notice that we have this uh, connected players array here, and this array contains all the players that are currently connected to the server. Now, all we're really filling that up with right now is their IP address and port. But we need to add a little more data to that because this player MP class does extend the player class, which also um, then extends mob, which extends entity. So these, these players not only have an XY coordinate, they have data as to whether they're moving, if they're in water, all that kind of stuff, which direction they're moving. And we don't really need some of that data. Um, we do for the most part, but right now we're not going to send some of that. Uh, we're just going to get some base XY coordinate stuff going on. So the player may not look as if they're um, moving in certain directions, but we'll fix that up later. Um, so if you remember from last episode, way back when, we got, if I move this over here, we got a bunch of stuff going on, and we do want to run the server. Our username's Vans. And you'll see that we connected to the server, so we do have a server running here. Uh, and we're moving around and all that kind of stuff. So this is what at the state that we're at right now, and we're going to update that a little bit. Um, if you also know, if I run another server here, and uh, I just open up ScreenFlow, uh, we're not going to run the other server, and we're going to name ourselves FDS. You won't see that, on, but it's coming up here. So you'll see FDS is connected and Vans, but Vans is here in this server, and FDS is, is just sitting still. And if I click into this server and move FDS, you see Vans is still in the middle, and he doesn't move here. So we're just going to make them move around a little bit. As I said, they're going to look a little weird when they move, though. Um, but let's just, we'll get to that later. Close out the server, and there we go. So, first things first, we need a new type of packet. So, let's create that packet right now. Um, I'm going to copy and paste the disconnect packet, because it contains some relevant information. Uh, so we're just going to remove that, and we're going to call this one, oops, see what I mean? Packet 02 move. Okay? And we'll open up the packet now, and we'll start editing some data. So first off, we need to change the ID to 2, and similarly down here. Um, and now, what we're going to do is we're going to include some more variables here. Uh, we're going to include 2 for now, just the x and y coordinates. So we're going to say private int x, y. And then we're down here, uh, we're going to say this dot x is equal to x, this dot y is equal to y, and let's add those in as arguments here. Now we need to actually deal with the server for when the server sends data. Um, so what we're going to do here is, if you recall this read data function, if I go into packet, it strips out the ID value right here, and it returns the rest of it, and we're delimiting the ID value with a comma, I think it was? Oh no, we're not delimiting it at all. Um, so this is going to be an issue for now, because we need to add some more data to this. We need to add these X and Y coordinates. So how we're going to do that is, firstly, we're going to call a variable here. We're just going to call it um, data array, and it's actually going to be an array here of strings. Okay, So that's going to be equal to read data, uh, data, and we are going to split the data. So this split function here will split a string based on a specific regex here. And the regex we're going to use is, we're just going to use a comma. Uh, we could use other things like a pipe or, or an ampersand or some, some other form of um, delimiter, but we're just going to use a comma. And that's all that's going to be. So now we have is we're going to replace this, and we're going to say data, oops, data array at zero is going to be equal to the username. Uh, next, what we're going to say is this dot x is equal to data. Uh, we're going to parse it first. So integer dot parse int uh, data array at one. And we're not going to do any arrow checking for parsing an integer. Typically, when you check strings and you turn them into integers, uh, this will throw an exception, a number format exception. I think it is. Um, but we're not going to check that because we know what we're going to be sending right now. Um, if, if you do things like make this public, we'll, we'll come back later to this kind of stuff and fix up error checking and stuff like that. Um, but we're not going to do that right now. Uh, we just want to get this part of it done. So now we're going to add the, uh, the y coordinate as well here. That's going to be at 2. So now let's take a look at the get data function here, and we're just going to put 0, 2 here, uh, just because we're in the second packet. There are other ways of handling this, but this is just the simplest for now. Uh, now we need to add these, now we need to add the equivalent to uh, what, what we're splitting right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say plus, and we're going to add some arguments. First we're going to add a comma, because we want to have that delimiter. Uh, and then we're going to say this dot x, and then a comma, and then this dot y. 
Okay, and that's going to give us all our arguments into one string. So it will come out something like um, this. This will be the string that's sent. It'll be zero two, and then Van Zeven, comma. Uh, let's say I'm at a hundred and a hundred, and that, that's what that string will look like. And this is what's going to get passed to and from the server. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to need something to return those x and y coordinates because we have functions that need to get this. So we're going to say public int get x, uh, return this dot x, and then public int get y, return this dot y. Okay. So that's all that, and that is our move packet done. Now what we need to do is we need to send this to the server, and when we're going to be doing that is when the player actually moves. So let's get into the player class here. Um, there is another way that we could handle this, and that's through the tick function. Uh, we, we could later, if we wanted to, just take this tick function right here, and we actually might do that. And just um, every time the server ticks, just send, send it out to the server, send it out to the server. But that's kind of an efficient way to do it, so we'll come up with something else later. Um, so what we're going to do here is this move packet here uh, is moving. We can just send it right down. Uh, yeah, let's do it right here for now. Uh, we'll move this around later on when we add more data to it, like the swimming data, if there are other moving data, but we'll just put it in here for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to make that packet first. So packet 02 move uh, packet, oops, it was new packet 02 move. And then we got to send in the data. So we're going to say this dot get username, uh, this dot x, and this dot y. So that constructs the packet, and we're going to use uh, control shift o to import it. And now we have that packet. Now we're going to say packet dot uh, write data, and we're going to need to write it to the server. And I believe that's by sending it to the client. It's been quite a while, so let me verify this. Uh, yes. So we need to add in the client to send it to the server. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, this dot. I should have in here somewhere. Uh, apparently I don't. Let's check that out. We should have some sort of game object here. Apparently we don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to directly call um, the game. And I should have an instance game dot game. What was it? It was something in here. Screen no. We need this client. Oh, I can just call the socket client. It's not static though. What is the game variable called? We not have one. I thought I had one here. Uh, so let's just make that really quick. I thought I thought that we had one. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say public static. Oops, public static um, game game. Okay, and we'll move this up with the other static variables up here. Okay, and then we're going to go down to where we initialize it here. Yeah, this is probably a good place. This dot game is equal to game. Or this dot game is equal to this. Sorry. Let's just say game is equal to this. There. So what that's going to do is it's just going to initialize that variable, so then we can call this variable and it will call this class. Um, so now we're going to go back into the player here. We're going to say game dot game uh, dot socket client. That's what we're going to send. Okay. So that's going to write the data to the socket or to the server, sending the data of the client. Uh, it's also how we did it in the original one over here when we sent it to the login packet here. Okay, so next things what we're gonna do is we are going to handle that data because now that we have it being sent we need to handle it somehow. So let's go into the net package here. Let's go into the server. So we're gonna get that packet here and we're gonna say uh, I should say it up here. Say case move. Okay, and then we're gonna say I didn't add that to the types so let's go into packet and there should be a packet type up here. Let's just add a comma and add that packet type here. Uh, move two, zero two. Okay, and let's go back to the game server. So now that we have this case here, uh, we're gonna say packet is equal to new packet zero two move. I spelled packet wrong. No, I didn't. Uh, data. So again, that's gonna go into that data function or the uh, constructor here and parse out this data from it. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to handle it. So we're going to say system for now dot out dot print line, and we're going to say um, 
packet dot let's actually cast it uh, I just want to see the data here so we're gonna say packet zero to move packet and some more here some more brackets go to the end we're going to say where's that bracket there it is uh, dot get username uh, has moved to and then we will take the x and y coordinates of this so just copy this and paste it right here and I believe I forgot a bracket in the beginning get x and we'll put a comma here Oops. Dot get y okay so that's gonna send that data and then what we need to say is we need to add it to the connections above so we're gonna say this dot handle move and uh, let's do paste that in there and that should be that now we just actually need to create that handle move function so we're gonna add that right here. let's just add it to the bottom okay so public void handle move actually I want to make this a private oops why is that doing that it's to be keyboard see what I mean uh, private void handle move and then we're gonna say packet zero to move packet okay so there's that packet here and now we just need to do deal with it so now let's actually handle the move here so what we're going to do first is we are going to see if that player exists so if uh, get player MP packet dot get username uh, if it's not equal to null null then we're sending illegitimate data from a player that doesn't exist and this is actually a function here okay so what we're gonna do here um, so if it's not equal to null that player does exist uh, otherwise just disregard it and exit the function now what we need to do is actually get that so we're going to need to get their index first um, yeah so we're gonna say int index is equal to get player mp index uh, packet get username okay so that's the index now we're gonna update the array so we're gonna say this dot connected players dot get at index uh, dot x is equal to packet dot get x it's quite a long line but you'll see what it does in a minute uh, dot get it index and again so we need to do the same thing but for the y dot y is equal to packet dot get y now this is gonna update this internal array here uh, with the data and actually keep it stored now in here so now we actually have this data now what we need to do is we need to send that to the clients so what we're going to do now is we're going to say uh, packet dot send oops uh, what is it right yeah dot write data and then we're gonna pass it the server so we're gonna pass it this so that it writes all the data to the clients so that should be that and now we need to handle what happens when the client sees that you move uh, so what we're going to do here is we have a parse packet here as well. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom, and we're going to say case move. Oops, move packet is equal to new packet zero to move data. Okay, so this is the same kind of thing. Uh, we're not going to say anything on this one because this is just we don't need to know the client that a client's moved because we'll see them move. So we're going to say this dot handle packet. Uh, we'll just say handle packet and then packet oops packet zero to move and packet just because we want to make a function to handle the packet or handle move rather not handle packet and we'll go down to the bottom and create that private void oops, private void handle move uh, packet zero to move okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually update the player so he's gonna send us that somebody's moved and we need to say that that entity in our in our game has moved so let's go into our level and take a look at what we need to do so in the level class here uh, what we need to do is we have an array of all these players here uh, it's a list of every single entity that exists in the game and right now those are only players uh, but what we need to do is we need to update that entity if it's pertaining to the actual one that we've received in the client so what we're going to do is we're actually going to do that. 
Uh, so we're going to make a public. Uh, let's make it private. Private int get player mp index, similar to the one we used before. Username. And it's also similar to the function above. So we're going to say int index is equal to negative 1. And we're going to say for entity, oops, e in entities. Okay. Then we're going to say if e is an instance of uh, player mp and, oops, and player mp, because we're going to do casting now, uh, if the usernames are the same, dot equals username. So if it's the same player, then we're going to say index is equal to uh, index, let's just say break here, and then we'll do index plus plus. Let's actually set this to zero. Okay, uh, then we're going to say return index. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to use that. So we're going to say public void move player string username int x int y. Now this can also function as a teleport, which is may something we may want to take a look at later on. But for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to set the variables. Uh, we're going to go into the player class, and we're just going to directly set the x and the y. A better way to handle this in the future when we send more data is actually just to uh, recall this move function here, and actually just make them move, and then handle all this data inside the move function, so that we don't actually have to recall this. We can just say that you've moved one block in this direction, so that's how much you're going to move. Uh, but we'll do that later on. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say move player. So we're going to say int index is equal to get player mp index uh, username. Okay. Now we're going to say um, this dot entities dot uh, get at index dot x is equal to to x, and this dot entities dot get at index dot y is equal to y. This is actually going to update this this player uh, to these coordinates. So now in the client we need to call that. So we're going to say game this dot game dot level uh, dot move player. Now we're going to say packet dot get username packet dot get x and packet dot get y. Okay, so that's, that's going to handle the move. So, I believe that everything should be running. Uh, so let's open this up here and see how things work out. Uh, there might be a few little issues here or there, but we will handle those as those come to us. So yes, we want to run the server here. My name is going to be Van Zeeben, and you'll see I've connected. And now, when I try to move here, you'll see that it's saying where exactly I'm moving to. So, it is actually sending it to the server and updating the server with my coordinates. Now, if I run another instance here, you will notice that, let me just get this stuff over here. So, no, I don't want to run the server this time. And your name is going to be Bob. You'll see that Bob's connected here. Now, if I move Van Zeeben, you'll see that he's automatically moving around on Bob's screen. Now, one thing, as I said, if I move up on Van Zeeben, you won't see him moving up here. And if I similarly go down uh, into this screen and move around with Bob, you'll see that he moves around. So, these two players are moving around, and it's all being handled by the server. One th issue here um, that I haven't addressed yet is when you connect. Okay, so if I disconnect Bob here, you see that he does leave the game. And if let's move Van Zeeven over to this little uh, jut out into the water here. Let's start up a new instance of the client. And let me reopen these guys. And we're going to connect Bob again. So we're going to connect Bob. Now you'll see that Van Zeeven and Bob are both interlapping here. Uh, that's because I'm just setting your actual coordinates in this one. And you don't actually know exactly where he is until you move your first time. And then he automatically knows, okay, you're over there. That's where you should be. Get over there. That's what's happening there. Um, yeah, so that's all I wanted to show you for this episode. We're going to correct that next episode and a few other things as well. Uh, but that's all for this episode. So you guys have a good day. 
and I shall see you next episode.